Destin, one, two, three. Okay. Um, happy new year. Welcome to the first podcast of this year. Um, uh, this is a podcast I actually made some time ago, but, uh, I was just waiting for the right time to, you know, publish it. In this podcast, I'd like to talk about the placement of Mars in Capricorn. So if you have Mars in Capricorn, this is a podcast for you. And in some ways, it also helps to delineate the Capricorn on the ascendant uh, placement, but not quite. There are several differences, but I'm not going to be pointing out these differences in this podcast because I have a podcast on Capricorn Rising, which I will share with you all in a short while. Now, Mars in Capricorn. What is the essence of Mars? Because whatever the essence of Mars is, it's going to have to come out of Capricorn. Now, if you've been following me as I've been uh, teaching about these uh, astrological signs, they are psychological archetypes because astrology is nothing but psychodynamics. It's just cashed up in all sorts of language and symbolism. But the reality of the matter is that astrology is delineating a human mind. Now, if you've listened to, if you've joined my classes, if you've been one of my students, you already know the answers to most of the questions in psychodynamics. Um, that is in astrology, so that these types of podcasts which I'm making, they're no stranger to you because you already know where it's coming from, that most of these understandings are coming from the five principles of organized complexity, which is my book, which I published in 2011 and 2020 which deals with the science of complex systems and what they really mean. It is from there that we understand why astrology works, where it came from, what it's supposed to do, why does it look like it belongs to the ancient past. But the reality of the matter is that it is now distant future. Because this is psychodynamics beyond anything being done today in the, psych in the field of psychology. Okay? The grasp of the human mind, before you can really understand what the human mind is all about, you have to be able to understand what the human mind is, what self-consciousness is, what consciousness is, what life is, where it comes from, and why it arose. Otherwise, how would you be able to know that your assertions are true? Okay? So everything here is derived from first principles. Now, the essence of Capricorn is a ten-dimensional knowing space. Yeah, you heard me right. A 10-dimensional knowledge space, meaning that it's a space that contains 10 different dimensions because Capricorn is the 10th zodiac sign. In progression, that is. So we start off from Aries and we move to Taurus and Gemini. But there is something that is changing. They're not meant to be 12 different things. Okay? And if you've been listening to me for quite some time, you would have realized by now that they're not 12 different things. There's six things, but even those six are one. So there's six pairs, you know, and they're always paired together, both vertically and horizontally. So Aries is paired with Taurus, just like Aries is also paired opposition to Libra. They all mean something. The placements are very strategic. They're, they're not just arranged because somebody felt like it. There's meaning behind everything. Because what are human beings? You know the thing that typifies a human being, separates a human being from every other creature on this planet, is that we are meaning-making machines. Why would the universe need to evolve a being that can make meaning? I mean, some people think that human beings are computational devices, but please, what are they computing? You do not compute meaning. You become meaning. Meaning is the way that human beings define their reality. Okay, so whatever your brain is, it is not a computer. You can just casually call it a meaning-making device. But that's, <laughs> that's not quite accurate. And it's only when you come into my classes, especially why astrology works, which is the premier class which I teach. It's the one that has the greatest subscription. Because to understand the essence of something, you need to understand the why of it. Okay, and you need to be able to take it from first principles. And once you do that, you can wrap your mind around it. And to wrap one's mind around something is to become entangled with that thing. It is to become that thing. And that is the nature of understanding. Otherwise, how do you know anything is true? Okay? Now, Capricorn, like I've said, is a 10-dimensional space, which is one way to look at it. And Capricorn represents the zenith, 
the peak experience in the natal chart and that experience is a material experience it's a peak material experience and it's like a stage and on that stage the essence that is demonstrated on that stage is not the thing per se in capricorn it is the journey the journey to the achievement of that 10 dimensional space so that in capricorn there's something that you want to show to the world but first and foremost, it really starts by you demonstrating that thing to yourself. That's how it works. It is when you have demonstrated such a thing to yourself. That's what gives you the oomph, the impetus to go on to try to demonstrate it to the world. All right? That's how it works. These are some of the secrets in natal chart synthesis. Because all the placements in the natal chart are telling one single story. You don't have individual placements telling individual stories. No. The reason why every placement is where it is is because of every other placement and together they make a symphony that symphony is the way that you perceive yourself it is your truth it is how you're supposed to perceive yourself it is the nature of that perception if you're not feeling that perception it's because you're not in line with your truth and there are many reasons for that but the principal reason why that happens is denial and denial is a very complex type of uh, it's a complex behavior in psychodynamics because for you to deny something you must first acknowledge it as truth and then you must seek to override that truth and so there are two stages and that means that there are two aspects of you that are engaged in denial okay and it's one of the features of saturn saturn is a denier that's why a lot of people are afraid of it in the natal chart and saturn rules capricorn so when you have a placement in capricorn the first instinct to that placement is denial because you're afraid of it. You're afraid of what it means, but you always know what it means. Now, that den the denial itself is so powerful that you separate yourself from that truth. And most people carry on for decades of their lives separated from that truth. But Capricorn contains the peak material experience for your achievement in life. It's, it's literally what you are trying to become. And forget about, you know, because I, People often get wedded to th the names of things, this, the nomenclature of things. And I understand that. But, you know, we could change all the astrological names. We could even change, we could even stop calling astrology, astrology. We can call it something else. We can call Aries something else. We can call Taurus something else. We can call Saturn something else. It doesn't change the functional behavior. And that's why I refer to these planets as functional lights. Because the essence of them is a function. And if you've been to my class, if you've read my book, you understand that I have an entire theory built around the principles of organized complexity. Because organized complexity is how the chaos of existence collapses into identifiable patterns and structures. Okay? That's why we can understand it. Because we carry the same type of organized complexity as we find in nature. We carry the same thing in our heads. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to understand anything. Otherwise, the entire world would appear the same way it appears in the, in the eyes of most of the creatures on this planet. They're not self-aware. And simply what that means is that they, they cannot relate from an individuated perspective to anything that they witness. They cannot perceive themselves. Okay? So if I, if I write a theory that I'm made up of molecules and atoms, alright? Well, these molecules and atoms recognize that they're molecules and atoms. That's a strange thing. If you don't know how strange that is, then you haven't thought about it properly. It's extremely strange. Okay? So that's self-consciousness, one of the mysteries of self-consciousness. But like I told you, when it comes to the five principles of organized complexity, there are no mysteries. That's the whole point. The whole point is to invaginate the mind with such knowledge, such foundational knowledge, that there are no mysteries anymore and everything is revealed all you need to do is to ask the right type of question and the question itself once it identifies once it correlates or once it resonates with the right type of structure in nature it must reveal the answer it's a must there's simply no other choice all right because the question itself once properly structured is the answer all right so Capricorn is where we aspire. Because remember, it is opposite the, it is usually the, 
sign that sits on the cusp of the midhaven. All right, so in the natural chart, and especially when you're dealing with whole houses of which I don't use, I have nothing against people who use them. All right, but I have very specific reasons why I don't use it. All right, because we're trying to describe a complex, very complex mind. The human mind is literally one of the most complex things that we know of. Otherwise, you couldn't be. You couldn't exist. All right. In order to model that complexity, we need a structure that is capable of handling that complexity. So to simplify things into, you know, patterns that are so simplistic, you miss out a lot of the dynamics. Okay. That's really what it is. So Capricorn sits opposite the IC, which is the Nadir, which would normally have the sign of Cancer on its cusp, because the two are literally projections of each other, whereby can the sign of Cancer is an internalization process driven by familiarity, whose essence is to deepen the psyche so that you can begin to construct foundations which now hold your sense of conviction, because it is those convictions as you lift them up that's what becomes your reality. And when you lift your convictions up to the highest point, that's the nature of Capricorn. It's a sea goat. It's not even a sea goat. It's, a, it's, a, it's an imaginary creature because its foundations are in the mysterious waters of the emotion. But its uh, front quarters are that of a, a mountain goat. Why? Because it represents the journey to the mountain top. Now, the mountain top is a psychological expression. It represents striving, the effort that is put into nature, the effort that is required to, to bring about material goals and objectives. It's a very powerful thing, you see. And the end product is as desirable as the journey. In fact, when you have placements in Capricorn and someone should gift you the meaning of that placement. You know, it, it could be Venus in Capricorn, so maybe the eventuality of beauty or the eventuality of, of pleasure or money or whatever. It means that you cannot accept that thing once it is separated from the journey. And the journey is that of a test of character. And its essence is to test the, the primary character of the placement in Capricorn. And who designs the test? It's you. Because you are the one who cannot accept that thing separate from its striving, separate from its journey. You simply cannot accept it. And if you are given that thing, it will destroy you or you will destroy it. You will sabotage it from an unconscious point of view simply because you cannot accept it. Because it's more than the placement itself. There is something that you are willing to demonstrate. And along the Capricornian journey, you will generate a lot of scars. Because it's a battle. You get beaten down most of the time. It's not, those are guaranteed. So it's not about the beatdown. It's your ability to pick yourself up after every beatdown. That's the whole point. So placements in Capricorn start off from a very, very, uh, minor position. They have, they're literally inferior placements to begin with. All right. And that's where the journey starts. It is the inhibition that is associated with bringing out that aspect or that placement, that functional light that is in Capricorn. That's where it all starts. So the tendency is to hide and then to hide and to run away, to go on exile of some kind. All right. But like the nature of denial, because when Saturn denies something, it's so that you cannot get the meaning, the foundational meaning of that thing as an intuitive faculty. Meaning, you cannot just intuit the knowledge of it. No, it's always denied. It is denied out of your consciousness. Think about uh, riding or drive, trying to drive a car that should normally have four wheels, but then one wheel is busted. All right? The drive is not going to be smooth. All right? That's the whole point. The whole point is to teach you how to change the, to, the wheel. To go look for a wheel or to fix the one that's broken and change it. It requires effort. Now you would say, but why? Why would you, why would nature or psychodynamics, why would it require the brokenness of a wheel? Well, that's a very good question. And it represents an entire podcast on its own because it ties down to a Judaic philosophical something. I know a lot of people have, um, what they call this in their background. You can call, you know, like I said, you, people are human beings everywhere. You can, people have experienced 
human nature for tens of thousands of years, maybe even longer than that. We've been people for a very long time, um, which means that there is nothing new in psychodynamics, really. Every aspect of what it means to be a person and all the struggles and challenges involved with being a person has already been experienced. All right, so all is known, really. So people call this many things in different, you know, in different areas that they come from. But in Judaic philosophy, it's called Naam Dik Sufa, and that represents like something like a bread of shame. So that the essence of Satan is to dispel that shame, to to tangle with it, to battle with it, to go to war with it, in a sense. All right, and to overcome it, and that is the nature of the striving. And there's a reason for that. It is because of the modern, the way that hum, modern human beings uh, describe the nature of, or appreciate the nature of value. Because value, you know, you know, the way that we have been conditioned, we are conditioned to accept or to attach value only to things that are very difficult. Okay. When things are very, very easy, we don't. No matter what we say or what we tell ourselves. We don't value it as much as when there's a striving behind it. And that's the nature of that meaning I've, I've talked about, you see. It's the way that we come to put together the meaning behind something. Because that's what astrology codes for. It codes for meaning. It doesn't code for things. It codes for motivations, feelings, and meaning especially. Okay? And what is meaning? Meaning is a narrative. It's a story. And you, we are storytelling machines, basically. We, you know, it's one of the things we do so well. We conjure up stories. Why? Because the operating system for the device we have between our ears is a narrative. It's a story. All right? We experience ourselves as the past. It's what most people don't tell you. You have a lot of motivational speakers who tell you to forget about the past and move on. This is bunk. This is absolute bunk. The past is how you experience yourself. When you think of yourself, maybe when you rise from sleep or something, and you need to refocus into who you are, you know, get a bearing on your surroundings and all that, what do you do? You pull your past into your present. If that past disappears, you disappear. Okay? Now, nature has gone through extraordinary amount of effort to make sure that you can remember your past. Why? Because it is very, very, very likely that your future is an extension of that past. And so learning from that past is key priority to creating and fulfilling objectives in your future. So please, don't forget about your past. If you've had experiences in your past, trauma, pain, suffering, joy, they are there. They are you. You are meant to learn from them because each experience that you have is basically changing who you are. Remember, your past is not separate from who you are. Your memories are not separate from who you are. Your memories are you. And that is the essence of the sign of cancer that sits on the cusp of the nadir, of the IC. And it is that which represents the foundation. Okay? So if you're forgetting your past, if you're throwing away your past and all that you're interested in is the future, the future is an idea. That's all it is. The past is what you have. It's the raw material that you have been given. So your alchemical process is conversion of that past into the future that you want. And that is the essence of Capricorn. Capricorn represents that future that you want. So it, it calls you to bring your attentive focus into the activities represented by the functional lights in Capricorn. So that you have to be conscious of what you're doing. You have to possess knowledge. And Capricorn comes from Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, if you've been listening to me all this while, is what I call the post-orgasmic experience. Because its source is in Scorpio. The orgasmic experience itself. And usually, when you find significant placements in Capricorn, or maybe even in the 10th house, then the energy source must be in Scorpio or the 8th house. Because that's where the real alchemy takes place. That's the energy source to produce Sagittarius. Because without Sagittarius, you cannot get to Capricorn. 
And Sagittarius is typified by this post-orgasmic experience that is an expanding space of conscious awareness. And the essence of that expanding space, because if a space is expanding, searching that space becomes even more difficult. And that's why the symbolism for Sagittarius is a centaur, is half man and half horse. Because horses were simply the fastest things people knew of. All right. So if you have to cover a very large distance, which is the, the theme of an expanding space, then you need to move very quickly. All right. So that the essence of that Sagittarian space is the connection and the production of long range concepts, which eventually we call philosophies, but they're really not philosophies. They are functional knowledges. They are how to knowledges, the knowledge of how to actually produce tangible material things in Capricorn. That's why I call Sagittarius, in addition to being the post-orgasmic experience, I call it the preparation for material success or for material achievement. Okay? Now, most people think that they really come into this world and they really want money. Everybody wakes up every morning and they go into the grind and everybody's trying to become rich and all that. <laughs> this is it's funny to me because if you only knew the truth, more than 50% of people, maybe even lo larger than, maybe even a larger number than that, don't want money. They think they do because everybody else does, but the truth is that they don't. That's really what it is. Nature doesn't know what money is. So how can it code for money? <laughs> you, you, you do, you do realize that your astrological natal chart, right, is a picture of nature as it is is a symbolic representation of nature as it is the moment you came into this world nature doesn't know about money so what is it coding for why would you say this chart has money in it this is nonsense this is bunk this is junk astrology all right but i, I listen i do not have any problems with those who interpret it interpret things that way that's the way they understand it that's fine for them this is my way Okay, and I am for those who want a much deeper understanding into the nature of their reality. That's I'm not obviously not palatable for everybody, but I am this way because that is my own story, that's the way that I am. And so, when this knowledge flows through me, it comes out the way that I am because the knowledge I am sharing is not external of me, it is me. Because the reality system that I carry in my head, which is where that knowledge comes from, is me. The same thing with you. Every human being is a reality system. So when you meet people, you're actually engaging in different realities. And that is the essence of Libra. Okay, I have a podcast on Moon in Libra. It's very interesting. It's one of my favorites, actually. Especially for those who are very much interested in how they manifest their reality. Because the moon in Libra really is a projection of a reality. That's really what it is. Okay. Now, Mars. The essence of Mars is a thrust. Mars is the way that we meet new realities. It is the enthusiasm behind realities. It is actually an expectation. An expectation of entry into a new reality. All right, but Mars in the natal chart is the energy attached to that natal chart regarding how changes occur. You know, so Mars in Aries has a lot of energy, for instance, because anytime there's a change in that person's reality, it's always according to that Mars in Aries because that's the energy that is supplied. You can think of energy physicians, you know, physicists, they think of energy as some type of a uh, currency that the, the universe employs. This is actually not true. The universe, you know, anyway, not to get too carried away, but energy is a waste product in some sense. Okay. But for to understand that paradigm, you need to be uh, familiar with the five principles of organized complexity, which is my book. Now, but what Mars really is, is an intent, a pulsating, pounding intent, the expectation of a new reality. That's what it is. That's what Aries is. That's what the first house is. That's why people who are dominated by these aspects, the Martian aspects or the Aryan aspects, this becomes a feature of the way that they engage things and people. It's all about the readiness for action, the readiness for change. It's like a loaded spring. Once you remove the hatch, boom, off it goes. All right. Now it's a one-dimensional space. That's what Aries is. It is the first dimension of experience. 
And on that first dimension of experience, it is not evolved at all. Because evolution means that you actually go from the first to the second to the third to the fourth. Aries is not concerned with all of that. So Mars is not concerned with all of that because Mars is the ruler of Aries. And rulership, like, like I've explained before, is not something that is magical or whatever. It's a matter of affinity. Because the reality of the matter is that natal chart synthesis is a, for lack of a better term, it's a spatial translocation shifting process. That's really what it is. There are shifts and translations and motions. You know, you have all these different types of operators. But that's what synthesis is. It's very complex. It's the essence of complexity itself. And that's why I can apply the five principles of organized complexity to natal chart synthesis. Okay? And if you're interested to see how it all works, that's why I encourage people to come join my classes. Now, this thrusting thing that is Mars, this energetic, forceful thrust that the Martian function and the Arian function represent, that's what must now come out of Capricorn. And so, just naturally, you see a mismatch. Now, traditional astrology tells you that Mars is exalted in Capricorn. That's traditional astrology. I don't use traditional astrology per se. I focus on first principles. Now, that exaltation usually means that the energy or the symbolism of what something a functional light represents is has an easy expression in the sign that is producing it. Not just easy, but it actually generates a strength in the psychodynamical pattern eventually. And that's exactly what Mars in Capricorn is. It starts off from a very weak placement. You know, the Mars is undeveloped. It's literally unable to assert itself in any way possible. And so it experiences the first few years of its life being impressed upon, being imposed upon by others. And it cannot accept this. And that is the beginning of the journey. Because by the time Mars in Capricorn becomes fully expressed, when the Capricorn is sufficient enough to understand the placement in, that it contains, or the placement, the functional light that it's meant to generate, by the time that happens, the individual is mature enough to understand the actual nature of that Mars. Meaning that, yes, I'm supposed to assert myself, but I'm not going to assert myself impulsively like is the natural nature of that Mars. So the impulsivity, most of it is gone. And it is replaced with the common sense typical of a 10-dimensional experience. So that the Mars is able to apply itself in tandem with long-term objectives. And it is usually a placement that is good at sustaining long-term pursuits. And Mars is not known for the long-term. It's a short-term Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That's what dominates its experience. Because like I said, it's a one-dimensional sphere of experience. Now, the idea of dimensions in astrology, you can think of them because I literally invented them. It's all part of the five principles of organized complexity and the way I teach about these things in my classes. You know, dimensions are basically just degrees of experience or they represent degrees of freedom. So if you are into engineering mechanics or whatever, the idea of a degree of freedom is something that should come naturally to you. Okay? Now, but this time around, we're not dealing with just physical mechanics. We're dealing with something more. We're dealing with psychodynamics, which is some type of mechanics, if you think about, uh, you know, if you think about it that way. It's just that the brain doesn't have any moving parts. So we're really thinking about the projection of this dynamic. Okay? That's a very interesting thing. So for those who have Mars in Capricorn, your energy output grows with time. So that as you get older, you become stronger. Your physicality, the physical expression of your body, your muscles and all that, it gets better with time. And it starts off from the opposite. It starts off from, you know, your health could even be indifferent, you know, in terms of you may even be sickly. That's how these things usually start. But your body learns. All right, that's what it, that's the journey. The journey is a learning experience that takes time. And you learn from failure more than most. Once you have placements in Capricorn or the 10th house, the primary experience of your life would be to understand the nature of failure because you will fail more than most. And the reason why you are given so much failure is because failure is a very good teacher. 
I mean, wise people become wise because they have a lot of experience of nonsensical mistakes, as in they make more mistakes than others. Now, if you don't make mistakes, you cannot fail. And if you don't fail, then you cannot learn. Now, the only thing to avoid is to avoid the mistakes that are flattening, or where you flatline, basically. But usually the natal chart has compensators, and Jupiter is one of the compensators in the natal chart. And so that reality is arranged in such a way that it supports the journey. All right, doesn't want to kill you or flat you out immediately. But, you know, the whole natal chart needs to be understood to understand how these things are compensated for. But Mars placed in Capricorn is not energy available for the short term. It is energy that has been made available for the long term. And then you need to look at placements in the first house and placements in Aries to understand a lot of how these things are linked up together. Very important because that is the nature of synthesis. There's nothing that is studied in isolation. Everything is studied within the context of everything else because that's the way the meaning is encoded. All right. Now, the more complex the dimensional space, the more complex the meaning that is encoded. So that by the time we get to the 12th dimensional space of experience, that is Pisces, you know, <laughs> you know, it's touch and go. It's you're basically imagining things right now because you the dynamics has become so complex in a 12 dimensional space you no longer can see how it goes and i think the last juncture where the dynamics is still somewhat trackable is in aquarius by the time you get to pisces it's all gone everything blends into everything and everything is jumbled into everything and it now represents a mystical experience. But what people don't realize when they talk about mysticism and spirituality is that you're simply still describing a physical experience. Spirituality is just the advanced form of physical dynamics. When the dynamics has become so complex that you cannot see how it goes anymore. But the physical realm is, is not different from the spiritual realm or whatever it is. These are just narrative. These are, these are, calibration points and they are calibrations in knowledge because if you can really understand the psychodynamics or the patterns that exist within mystical spaces then it is revealed as knowledge as knowledge that you can study and knowledge that you can write down and that's how everything really exists there's really there are really no mysteries it just depends on what kind of questions you're asking and the tools you're using to probe these mysteries okay and that's really what it is so those who have mars and capricorn they're much better aligned to long-term goals that's really what it is the the ability to get angry and because mars is in your natal chart is also how you get angry because that anger is a response okay but when it's in capricorn it becomes very moderated it says that in the early part of life in the formative years and afterwards you know into you know the first half of the or the first period before the saturn return the individual doesn't understand their strength they don't know. How would they ever know? But what happens is that in the long term, especially after the Saturn return, when maturity begins to set in, the individual builds a very powerful constitution, as in a physical body, a physical sense of self that is filled with energy and purpose, a drive that can carry them to the top of the mountain that they want to go. And so that Mars becomes something that they're trying to achieve. That Mars now contains meaning regarding their purpose in life. It's tied to something that they need to demonstrate. So you have, you find people who grow to be professional risk takers. You find people who grow to be professional soldiers. Because Mars is, you know, it is the aggression in terms, it's also, it also represents your, the response of your immune system. And the basic way that your body processes glucose as a sugar. And so, basically, what that means is that when you have Mars in Capricorn, there are chances that in the early stages of your life, you may suffer from hypo or hyperglycemia. All right. So, Mars in Capricorn is being trained. And its energetic nature is not being trained. It is being trained to recognize, to understand, to project, to pass through the enigmatic nature of Scorpio, to expand in Sagittarius. And then to finally coalesce in Capricorn. So it's a journey. And the individual will experience the journey as if that Mars is going from Aries all the way to Capricorn. That's really what it is. And these will represent different stages in the person's life. Because ultimately, however you look at it, Mars, just like Aries, is a one-dimensional space. 
so that when it, that one dimensional space is found in Capricorn, it points to a reduction, you know, because Capricorn is a 10 dimensional space. So that we're talking about only one axis and not Capricorn, only one dimension and not Capricorn responding. And then we can now see how that response correlates with every other thing in the natal chart to deliver the meaning, the full symbolic meaning in the natal chart. So whenever, as personally, whenever I see Mars in Capricorn or any placements in Capricorn, really, it doesn't matter where that Capricorn is placed. It immediately begins to tell me what the life story is about because it will correlate with what Saturn is doing, wherever it is doing in the natal chart and wherever the nodes are. You begin to put the picture together gradually. And you, something begins to stare at you. And what you're looking at is the complete psychodynamical pattern. That is the complete behavioral responses of a human mind. Okay. Now, obviously, the human mind, because what is encoded in the natal chart are the complete spectral responses of the human mind, meaning their behavioral responses, because behaviors are responses. So when somebody interacts with something, right, when your environment interacts with you, you respond. The way that you respond is what is encoded in that natal chart. So as you change environments, as you, as you move from environment to environment, different aspects of your behavior are initiated. So some people talk about astro cartography and all that, but that's what it's based on. It's not magic. You need the right type of environment to activate the right type of response within you because those responses are hard coded. You have a predisposition to respond in certain ways. All right. Now, certain parts of the way you respond may need further evolution than other parts. And that is the story of life. To understand this pattern and how it evolves within the human being, how it evolves within yourself so that you can better understand your responses. And that way you don't become a slave to your responses. Do you understand why you are responding this way? Because that's the way that you are. And if you don't like it, then you can begin to inseminate it with will. Because we're human beings, we're not trees. Okay? Even though that we have these hard-coded patterns of expression, of responses, that is. We're not robots, you know, in that sense. You know, Our program is so complex. Unlike the way robots and machines are programmed, we are programmed by very simple rules. But when you bring those rules together and allow them to interact, then the space of possibility is almost infinitely complex. That's the whole point of natal chart synthesis. Because all these functional lights are very simple rules. If, you, if you're asked to define what Mercury symbolizes, if you're asked to define what... And there are many more simple rules than that because the solar system contains millions, billions of bodies. But we use the largest ones because 99% of the mass of the solar system is in the sun. That means a lot. All right. It's why most people, you know, basically just focus on sun sign astrology. But it doesn't mean anything without context. That's really what it is. Because Mars finds itself in Capricorn, the primary stimulation for that Mars is ambition. The idea of climbing to the top, the idea of being the boss, the idea of achieving mastery in a field is the thing that gets that Martian energy flowing. You know, once you discount that, then the individual is not driven at all because they cannot connect with the meaning outside of that Capricorn, which is normal because it is the Capricorn that is producing the Mars. And so people like this, they have an excellent understanding of what management really is all about. And they must have been learned this during their early years and during their strivings. They learned to manage resources. They learned to manage people. They learn to manage their environment in a way that allows them to get the maximum response from that environment. They have to learn to do this because the, Marsh, the Martian tendency is to do the opposite. All right. The Martian tendency is basically to go out on a limb every single time. But the Capricornian sign that generates the Mars is really designed to restrain that impulsive behavior. So that the mass still comes out, but it comes out with purpose, it comes out with meaning, and it is now much more multifaceted than just the one-dimensional space that Aries connotes. So now it is tied to different aspects of reality, meaning different needs, different requirements. 
So you have an excellent organizational person, an excellent company person, an excellent executive, one that keeps their eyes firmly on the goals and the targets now that they're trying to achieve. Now, the interesting thing about Capricorn is that it wants to be seen to win. So it is very important to Capricorn how it wins. You see, because what it's really looking for is applause from the establishment. Because society is always built around established ways of, of the world. You know, you have to work hard. You have to put up a good character. You have to have a great personality. You have to be a team player. You have to, etc., etc., etc. Most of this is just hogwash in reality. Okay? It's just something we tell people because we want everybody to follow the same type of route. But the Capricornian actually believes this. They believe that in order to be able to gain mastery, you have to imbibe all these things. And that's what they go for. So they're idealistic in one sense. In a very realistic sense, they are very idealistic. Why? Because they want to be seen to win. And they want to be able to be seen to win by playing by the rules that everybody else is playing by. Because what is important to them is to demonstrate that they are far better than you. That they're better than everybody else. You know, think of an old sea captain who has navigated the seven seas, has lived to tell the tale, grow old. Everybody comes for wisdom. They're sage, literally. They can tell you how all the seas behave, etc. They have a lot of scars. They probably, you know, lost an eye or something like that. Whatever. But the guy is extremely proud. Those scars are things that they value more than anything else. Because that is the Capricornian journey. It's mastery. Mastery of self is what Mars in Capricorn is all about. So ultimately, these are fantastic generals. People who can discipline themselves to the point where they become the spear tip for execution of strategies. That's really what it is. They have excellent movement. And you see this, you know, when they begin to mature. That they have excellent gait, excellent posture. Excellent movement, excellent body strength that keeps them going long after many people are exhausted. You know, it's a long distance race and they can wear you out. And that's why traditional astrologers say that Mars is exalted in Capricorn. It's because they just keep going. But they learn how to keep going. It's not something that they're born with. They're usually born into the opposite, like I've said. And it represents a significant struggle for them. But that is part of their win. That's part of their win. And they take on these ambitious projects. They take on these ambitious goals, which they now work judiciously towards. Okay? So you can imagine that the Mars in Capricorn personality is always suppressing the Martian rage. Now, I told you that Mars is the energy for sex. Because predominant placements in Mars, they're principally concerned with thrusting. Don't ask me why. It's just what it is, right? These are jackrabbits, literally, because that's what the Martian function really symbolizes. It is the birth of life. So it is concerned with that life process, the process of actually being born, because the Aries, zero degrees of Aries is a natural ascendant. So it's really concerned with the new experience of a new passionate love or a new passionate experience. A new, it's all about the energy of sex. It's not sex itself. It's just the energy of sex. And if that energy doesn't go into competitive sports, which is one other area that Mars and Capricorn can shine, it goes into sex. Okay? That's really what it is. So they're always suppressing that rage. And when they blow, ooh, they can destroy everything they've been working on. Every strategy and they've managed to piece together on their rise to the top. One outbust because those outbots are really serious things can destroy the whole thing and then they have to start again and that's why i say that mars and capricorn you enjoy you, that you seem to attract more than your fair share of failures and it's not because you're not good enough it's not because no it's, to, it's so that you can learn what that success really means that's the only way you're going to enjoy it more than others. Because there is a very good chance that the success that you're trying to achieve has already been achieved by many people. But it would mean something different to you because you have to struggle even harder for it. All right. So there's a pride that comes with Mars and Capricorn when they eventually achieve their goals. Now, because Capricorn attenuates any functional light that initially finds itself in it, Mars and Capricorn is not uh, averse to having these love affairs with 
sexual affairs, they're not love affairs, sexual affairs that they hide, that they're kind of ashamed of. And this can lead to scandal because the thing about Capricorn is that since it's trying to climb to the top, the higher it goes, the more the potential of the scandal can bring it down. That's the whole point. So it's to learn to step lively, to learn to step wisely and all that.